Hey friends, welcome back. It's Sound Guy Barry. In this episode, I invite you to take a look with me at a somewhat unique vocal microphone that I thought you might be interested in seeing and listening to. And of course, right now I'm using that microphone for this video so you get a chance to hear what it sounds like. And this is a microphone that I consider to be kind of interesting. It was manufactured from about 1969 until about 1990. And this is the Biodynamic M500 Live Performance Vocal Microphone. And this microphone was one of Biodynamic's more popular mics of the time. And it is the microphone that was the preferred mic for Frank Sinatra when he did live performances because apparently old Blue Eyes felt that it made him sound the best. It's got a really smooth sound character and an extended high frequency response. And this microphone works great for vocals. It's got a really tight pickup pattern, as you can see, and a reasonable proximity effect as I get nice and close to it and back off here a little bit. It can be used for a number of things. It can be used for vocals. It's also pretty good for guitar pickup and even drum overheads. Now, one of the things that makes this microphone unique is that it's not a dynamic microphone, it's not a condenser microphone, but it's actually a ribbon microphone. Now, a dynamic microphone operates much like a loudspeaker does, where you have a diaphragm, aka like the speaker cone, and on the bottom of that diaphragm there's a coil of wire, which is placed near a magnet. And so as the diaphragm moves up and down or in and out, it moves that coil of wire in and out of a magnetic field. And for those of you who have endured some basic physics classes, you know that as you move a coil of wire through a magnetic field, a voltage is induced, which can be amplified, and uh, that makes the microphone work. So, of course, the microphone would be a much smaller element than a loudspeaker would be, but conceptually they're very similar. A condenser microphone, on the other hand, uses a... A diaphragm which is part of a condenser or a capacitor and there's some electronic circuitry inside of the microphone to measure the difference in capacitance as it moves and the advantage to that design is that the moving element is much lighter than it would be inside of a dynamic microphone but this microphone right here is a ribbon microphone which operates like a dynamic microphone where there's a coil of wire inside of a magnetic field but instead of a coil of wire there's just a very thin ribbon and the idea behind that is that the thin ribbon is a much lighter more sensitive assembly than a traditional dynamic microphone's moving coil diaphragm assembly. So therefore, this microphone is able to give very articulate, clean and clear high frequency response. And it also actually has pretty good low end response. And it's um, very smooth across the band. And so it's a pretty accurate sounding smooth, clean, clear microphone, and it, it works really well. The M500 microphone by Biodynamic, this one here, has a somewhat lifted high-frequency response, pretty much in the same way that the Shure SM58 or most other vocal microphones have a little bit of accentuation in that upper mid-range to help the vocals come through nice and clean and clear. But um, it's considered to be smoother and... Um, better mic than the 58. It was pretty expensive in its stay, and uh, you can still pick these up used for about $350. Some of the downsides of using a ribbon microphone is that they are generally considered to be fairly fragile. That ribbon assembly is very lightweight and um, can be damaged easily if the microphone is dropped or stored improperly. The Biodynamic M500 was designed for live performance use, and so as ribbon mics go, it's fairly rugged. However, I would be more careful with this mic than a typical, like, Shure SM58 dynamic that is more commonly used. You found a lot of ribbon microphones used way back in the day, like in the 1940s. So it's a, a old traditional design that um, still works quite well. One more thing to be aware of with ribbon microphones is that you should be sure to not apply phantom power to these kind of microphones. Phantom power is where you apply 48 volts DC, typically, 
down the two signal lines of the microphone, and that's used to power the electronics that are inside of condenser or capacitor microphones, which have some preamplifier circuitry inside of the mic itself. With a dynamic microphone, they're usually immune to phantom power being applied to them because it just balances out both sides of the uh, transformer in the mic. But with a ribbon microphone, phantom power can actually damage the mic. So you have to make sure to not have phantom power engaged when you plug in any kind of ribbon microphone. But at any rate, I thought you would be interested to see this classic mic. It's um, the Biodynamic M500. And uh, I think it's a really good sounding mic. Like I say, I tend not to use it very frequently with my shows because of its fragility. But having a wide variety of mics is useful because it gives you a lot of different characters of sound that you can work with with different kinds of vocalists, and you can work through them to see which one works best in your situation. Uh, like I mentioned, this mic has pretty tight polar response, so it really does work quite well for live events. And I thought you'd find... Um, that to be an interesting artifact to history. If you find a Bayer M500 for sale at a good price, it might be worth adding to your arsenal. I see that these are now going for approximately $350 on eBay on the used market. So, interesting mic, and um, I think it works pretty well. So there you have it, folks, the Bayer M500 ribbon mic. Hope you found the video interesting. If you do, I'd appreciate if you'd hit the subscribe button, hit the bell so YouTube will notify you of new content as it comes down. And if you like the video, give me a thumbs up. I appreciate it. And all of those things help the YouTube statistics, which help this channel grow. So thanks again for watching another episode of Sound Advice. My name is Barry. I'm a sound engineer in the Minneapolis, St. Paul, Twin Cities area. I'd love to help you out, and I'd love to help you. Have great shows, because I want you to sound great. So thanks for watching, and I'll catch you in another episode soon.